Hi there. Welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Ever wondered how Netflix knows what you'll binge next or how Amazon suggests exactly what you want? Now that's the power of AI recommendation system engines that learn from data to deliver personalized choices just for you. In this tutorial, we will learn about what is an AI recommendation engine. That said, if these are the type of videos you would like to watch, then hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified whenever we host. Also, if you want to upskill yourself, master generative AI and artificial intelligence skills and land your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's cohort of various generative AI courses and certifications. Simply Learn's offer various certification program in collaboration with some of the world's leading universities like Purdue, IT Guwahati and many more. Through our courses, you will gain knowledge and work ready expertise in these skills. You can advance Python, machine learning, generative AI, and over a dozen others. And that's not all. You'll get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts working on top-tier data and product companies and experts from top universities. And after completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into an AI and machine learning role as a fresher or moved on to higher paying job and profile. Now, if you're passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned description box and find our generative AI program that fits your experience and areas of interest. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now, before moving on, let's discuss the agenda for today. So first, we'll understand what is an AI recommendation engine. Followed by that, we will learn how they work and the five different stages based on their working. And lastly, we will discover the advantages and disadvantages. Hope I made myself clear with the agenda. So let's get started. Now, before we learn anything, we often start with a question. What is this? Let's say, for example, let's consider a large language model. We begin learning about it by asking a question. What is a large language model? But today, I think we are all familiar with our topic of discussion. In fact, the name speaks for itself. The recommendation engine. They are the ones behind your screen suggesting you which video to watch next, which songs you might like, which product you might be interested in, all based on machine learning algorithms that find patterns in user behavior to create personalized suggestions just for you. But I bet most of you may not have known how they work. Well, let's get into it. We will get started with what is a recommendation system. Then we will understand how a recommendation system works. So what is a recommendation engine? And recommendation engine is an artificial intelligence system that uses machine learning algorithms to analyze user data and suggest personalized items or content. Now, these systems help users discover new products or information and are a core feature of many online businesses, including e-commerce, streaming service, and social media. Now, according to marketing research by some tech giants, this kind of customized personal approach has higher impact and can raise revenues by at least 10 to 20 percent. The recommendation engine market is currently valued at around eight billion dollars and it's expected to double or even triple down the line, probably by over the next five years. Now, to target users with suitable suggestions, a recommendation engine typically operates in five phases. The phases are data gathering, data storage, data analytics, data filtering, feedback loop. These are the five stages of the recommendation engine. Now that we have a quick briefing, let's get into the details. So let's start with our first phase, which is data gathering. So what is exactly data gathering? The name speaks for itself. Nothing complicated. The more we know about a given user, the better for the recommendation engine. Basically, there are two main types of data that recommendation engines need. The first one is explicit data and the second one is implicit data. So let's move on by understanding what is explicit data gathering. Now, this includes direct user interactions like likes, 
follows, shares, comment and subscriptions. By the way, if you have liked this video so far, now would be the great time for you to hit that thumbs up button and click that subscribe button so the YouTube recommendation engine would show you more of our content. Now that brings us to our next type of data which is the implicit data gathering. This is more like the data based on your behaviors like clicks, screen time, search history, recent purchases. Now, there are personal thought to it. You might be wondering, I never leave reviews, I always browse in my incognito mode, there's no way they have data on me. But here's the twist. Search engines don't just rely on your activity alone. They're actually designed to tap into patterns from people just like you, with similar demographics like age, psychographics like interests and lifestyle choices. Recommendations can make predictions on your preferences. So let's get started with our second phase which is data storage. So far we have understood recommendation engines work from the data collected. The second phase is all about the process of storage. Once the data is collected, the data needs to be stored typically in systems like either in data warehouses that usually aggregates all the structured data from different sources or in the data lakes that can store structured and unstructured data or maybe in the data lake house that can combine features of both. REST is the third phase and you can already predict it. Now this is known as data analysis. Now here comes the fun part, the analysis powered by machine learning algorithms. These algorithms do some heavy lifting behind the scenes. They detect patterns uncovering hidden trends in massive amounts of data. They identify correlations showing how different factors are connected. And also they access the strength of these correlations, helping us understand which relationships actually matter. Next comes the fourth phase, which is the data filtering. Now in the data filtering stage, the system takes all that analyzed data and filters it down, keeping only the most relevant items that match what matters most. Think of it as narrowing a wide search engine into a deeper, focused shortlist. We will be diving deeper on how filtering works in just a moment. Let's take a step further and understand a few methods or variations of filtering. Filtering methods in recommendation engines. Now, filtering is a key to recommendation engine and there are three main types. Let's start with collaborative filtering. Now, this method works by filtering suggestions based on how similar you are to other users. The idea is very simple. If people like you enjoyed certain items, chances are you'll enjoy them too. There are two main types of collaborative filtering. The first one is memory-based collaborative filtering. Now here, users and items are placed into a matrix. The system uses the k-nearest neighbor algorithm to spot similarities. With the item-based filtering, it compares items based on how users interact with them. And with the user-based filtering, it compares you to other users suggesting items that similar users liked. Now, the second one is model-based collaborative filtering. Now, this approach goes a step further, so it uses machine learning models to predict preferences by identifying deeper patterns in behavior. A popular technique here is matrix factorization, which breaks down a massive user item matrix into smaller meaningful factors, making recommendations more accurate and efficient. Now, the second one is model-based collaborative filtering. This approach goes a step further. So, it uses machine learning models to predict preferences by identifying deeper patterns in behavior. A popular technique here is matrix factorization, which breaks down a massive user item into smaller meaningful factors, making recommendations more accurate and efficient. Next up, we have got content-based filtering. Unlike collaborative filtering, this method doesn't compare you to other users. Instead, it focuses directly on the features of the items themselves. So what it does, it looks at attributes such as keywords that describe the item, product descriptions and characteristics. And based on this, it recommends items with similar features to the ones you have already shown interest in. This method works specially well when the item data is rich and detailed, giving the system more to analyze. 
The items are new or niche and haven't received enough ratings or interactions yet. And at last, we've got hybrid filtering. As you might guess, hybrid filtering combines both the collaborative and content-based filtering. Now, this helps overcome limitations of each method. Let's say, for example, OTT platforms like Apple TV, Prime, Netflix combines collaborative filtering based on user ratings. Content-based filtering based on genre, actors. Now that we have a comfortable understanding the fourth phase, it's time we move on to the fifth and last stage, and that is feedback loop. Now, this stage continuously evaluates the outputs of the recommendation system, checking whether users act on the suggestions or ignore them. That feedback is then fed back into the model, helping it adapt, learn and improve, ideally making recommendations more accurate and relevant over time. Now, let's come back to the need for recommendation engines, their advantages and their disadvantages. As a quick summary, recommendation systems matter because they make user experiences smoother, keep customers engaged and drive measurable business growth, all while shaping the way we discover content and products every day. With that, let's discuss the advantages and the disadvantages. First, the advantages improved user experience. By suggesting relevant items, these engines save users from endless scrolling. In fact, nearly 80% of what people watch on Netflix comes directly from recommendation. Higher customer retention personalized experience makes users feel understood, boosting satisfaction as much as 20% according to McKinsey. Increased revenue. Now, recommendation directly impacts sales. Let's say, for example, 35% of all the purchases on Amazon are driven by recommendations. But then, there are disadvantages too. Cost and complexity. Processing massive amounts of data requires advanced architectures and significant computing power. Then we've got poor recommendations. If the algorithm are optimized with the wrong metrics, they may over-promote popular items while overlooking true user preferences. The third one is biasness. Machine learning models can unintentionally pick up biases from their training data or human evaluators, leading to unfair or misleading suggestions. Hope this session was informative. And now let's have a small quiz to test your learning. The question is, which filtering method relies on user-to-user or item-to-item similarity? The options are content-based filtering, collaborative filtering, hybrid filtering, and rule-based filtering. Let us know your answers in the comment section below. And with that, we have reached the end of this session on AI recommendation systems. Should you need any assistance or any other resources used in this session, like PPT and others, then please let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to help you as soon as possible. Until then, thank you and keep learning with Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, you can check the description box below.